Uh, hi there, uh, welcome to another uh, drawing demo here. Uh, I'm pretty much going to treat this in a similar way as uh, the last video I did where I'll just sort of draw through and kind of talk about the process and what I'm thinking about. Uh, but I do have this cool light here so hopefully you can see this one a little better. Uh, so let's, uh, you know, let's get right into it. So I'll pull up the reference here. Uh, and, you know, one thing I would say is before you start drawing, uh, be it from life or if you're just using reference, you know, uh, just take a moment and ask yourself, you know, what's going on? What is the major action of the pose? Uh, where's the weight uh, in the figure? Uh, and really just sort of think of a, a plan of attack. Um, this is sort of your first pass actually at actually drawing the figure. Uh, where you sort of come up with what you want to do, what what's important about the pose. Uh, so looking at this here, the big thing I'm looking at is that major action. So through his head, we feel that stretching over. Uh, we feel his body sort of leaning over, pushing up from his left arm, and we feel this twist uh, through his torso into his hips. And the major weight distribution, he's really leaning on that uh, his right leg which is crouched up against the stool and on his left leg he's really sort of pushing up uh, from his toe uh, and his foot so there's still you know there's a lot of tension in that leg as well uh, and along with that you know we see a slight tilt to his hips with his right leg being a little bit higher there's a tilt to his shoulders as his left arm pushes up and so really it's his right arm that's just draped over uh, that is sort of the least active in this pose. So with that in mind, you know, a big big thing I want to try and capture with this is that, that sort of stretch in his neck pulling into that twist in his torso. Uh, so let's uh, get started here. Let's uh, set up first the gesture. So the last demo I did, uh, you know, I started with the head and again, I find that the either the head or the torso are probably the two major areas that you want to start with. Uh, so for this drawing, uh, you know, we can start with the torso here. Just kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, so looking at this pose, you know, a lot of the action will sort of stem from his left arm, which he's really pushing up on. So we can establish the kind of shoulder axis here. Let's see, and I'm going to kind of exaggerate that tilt. So with my initial lane here, again, just think about the, the action of the pose. Don't worry about details or specific things. You want to think of it more like you're not so much capturing the shape of things, but you're trying to communicate the action of things. So we have this sort of stretch and pinch idea going on, and you might have heard of maybe like the bean idea or we can sort of think of it maybe as like a sack of flour here just sort of hunched over uh, so this is sort of tipping over so that's sort of the same idea we're getting here where he's just sort of leaning over we have this big strong stretch through here we're getting a compression through here and let's actually pull into his uh, right leg here which is crouched up against that stool and then pulling down here on the opposite side we're going to get a sense of his other leg pulling down here and you know let's actually get something in for that stool. One thing is, you know, when you think about weight, whenever the model is leaning on something, be it like a stool in this case, or maybe a staff, or like a pole or something, uh, you know, if, they, if they're leaning on it, uh, that's usually a pretty important element to include because it, it becomes a part of the pose. So if you omit that, it'll feel like the figure is floating or you know, you lose that sense of weight to things here. So, you know, props and stuff are very important um, to telling the story of the pose here. Uh, another thing, you know, I notice right off the bat is that he is sort of leaning towards us. 
So if we think of his upper torso here, we think of it like a cylinder, sort of a squish cylinder tipping over here. And from this shoulder here, we can feel that pull of his arm. Now this arm is, you know, really sort of pushing up on that uh, stool as he bends over. So we can actually pull that straight to get that feeling of tension in there. And then we throw something in for his hand here. And we, uh, you know, as this pushes up, we feel a cross and we feel this drop in his shoulders here. So this arm, in this case, is actually just gonna be draped as more of a curvy form here. So these straights will emphasize tension and sort of curvier, wispier lines will sort of emphasize um, that relaxed form here. So we have this here, this pulling in, pushing out. And then we're really feeling his, uh, his head sort of stretching over. So this sort of becomes where his neck attaches here. And we feel this pull out and one thing I'm really paying attention to uh, is where his shoulder sits in relationship to his chin. So as sort of a visual cue here, if we have a head and this is just like basic silhouette here and we draw the shoulders below, we're either looking straight at them or we're looking up at them or they're sort of leaning back in relationship to us. And if we have a head that is below the shoulders, or his chin is below the shoulders, we get the sense that we're either looking down at them, um, you know, this way, or they're sort of tilted over. So just by establishing that relationship, you say a lot about what the figure is actually doing here. So that's one of the first areas I'll look at when I'm dealing with the shoulder girdle here. Uh, and, you know, one thing to take note of, too, is that I'm really making a point to draw the whole figure out from head to toe. And it's important, uh, you know, to address everything, you know, treat the figure as an entire composition rather than focusing too much on just sections or little details of it. You know, you, it, that's good if you're sort of trying to work things out, like maybe you're just studying torso anatomy or whatever. But what... What tends to happen is, you know, the more you draw one thing, you get you get better at it. So if you just draw torsos all day long, you'll have beautiful torsos. But, you know, I find that a lot of students and stuff, they'll be lacking in other areas, like attaching the head to the body is uh, really important. Putting hands and feet in are really important. So, you know, we tend to, to draw the things that uh, that we're good at, you know, that we like to draw but that usually comes at the expense of neglecting other areas. So the rule of thumb is, you know, if, if you don't like drawing it, then those are usually the areas you, you should draw, right? And get better at. <clears throat> so anyway, so we have this sort of rough setup here uh, in the sort of two-dimensional gesture. And really, you know, again, don't worry about details. Uh, this should really feel like the pose, uh, and, but not necessarily look like it, right? Uh, in terms of specific details that we see. Uh, let's see, this is Swiss over, kind of adjusting things just a little bit more here. Uh, so we can start to develop this uh, into more uh, of a 3D um, aspect here. So a big thing would actually be his center line starting off. So we feel his torso pushing over this way, and then we shift over and we feel a little more centered towards his hip. So even though, again, his arm is here, I'm trying to visualize what that's actually doing. And a big thing I see here uh, is that we're actually seeing more of this side of his upper torso here. And then on this side, on his hips, we're seeing a little bit more of this kind of side plane. So. If we think of his body as a, some simple blocks here, you get this, he's tipping over to the side, 
up here. And then we feel that twisting back over and we see that plane, that side plane sort of reappear on this side now. So we have that sort of twisting box idea. And of course, you know, with the center line here, it'll be closer to this side. And as we shift down, it'll push back over to this side here. Uh, so as I uh, build out this drawing a little bit more, uh, I'll be kind of thinking about that here. So I have this, it's getting a little messy up here, but we'll clean that up. Uh, so let's kind of set up some simple volumes here through his neck. We can feel that as that kind of cylinder here. And we can set up a rough idea of where his rib cage is. Again, that neck being sort of the anchor point through the pit of the neck and the seventh cervical back here. Uh, we get a sense of his rib cage. Now with the rib cage here, he is leaning forward, so it's gonna be a little bit squat, uh, a little bit, you know, squished this way because we're seeing it foreshortened. Uh, and then dropping down, we feel his obliques coming down here. And right as this turns in here, there's a slight turn. That's going to give us the corner to his hips here, the top of the hips. And this will drop down, and we see the other side of his oblique stretch down. So there's a slight angle here in the hips that we want to get. And, you know, my pad might be a little bit tilted in the opposite direction. So if we're thinking of this box, again, thinking back to this idea, we're seeing more of this side here. through the groin and we feel this turning up here uh, and then we can sort of connect his leg here so from this point we step down there's what they call the three finger gap and this is really sort of the anchor point to the sort of volume of the leg here we have this and we're, we are seeing the front plane to this so we can show that. And one thing I would emphasize along with that is we can take this and turn it into that box again. So, you know, when we're dealing with cylinders, they're really good for, say, showing us how the form is moving this way, this way, this way, and this way. But what it doesn't give us is a sense of the rotation to the form. You know, how is that form rotated? So to really lock it down and define that, uh, that's when we want to start to incorporate boxes here. So one thing you'll notice is with this process it's really a matter of working from general to specific uh, or bigger ideas to more specific things. So same thing with the leg. We start with this broad idea of just a directional shape and then we gradually get more specific with you know, how is it moving through space. We think of the cylinders and then the most specific we can get in terms of these simple forms is um, sort of boxing it out to some degree. So we gradually build up to that with these forms here. Uh, let's see, so on this other leg here, you know, it's sort of the same deal. Let's kind of adjust our, our lane a little bit. You know, and don't be afraid again to change things. Uh, or to plus things with each step of the process here. So this will come out and we have this and we see this kneecap here, the front of the knee. <clears throat> but again, to, to sort of lock it down, we can sort of box this out here. And really the, you know, if you think of the leg here, it's sort of this roundy volume that transitions into this box. So it's like like a chicken leg. And, you know, essentially a drumstick here is is the leg of a chicken. So, you know, it makes sense that uh, it's analogous to a human leg, right? Uh, <laughs> so dropping down here, we'll get, and again, I'm sort of correcting my drawing as I go. This leg dropping into the foot. We can think of this ankle here as a box. And then the foot itself 
will sort of turn into this kind of wedge here. Pull this corner through. Again, there's this uh, rotation this way to this knee here. And uh, let's see, this pulls out. You know, and uh, this, I guess I'll mention this, this rotation to the leg is actually really important uh, because what it does is we have the torso pulling out this way we have the hip turning out this way, and that knee is sort of moving in opposition to the form of the torso here. So that helps to um, really reinforce that sense of twisting in that gesture. So sometimes, you know, to emphasize or exaggerate the gesture, it's not just about tilting this more, um, but it might be about tilting this and then playing something up against it, right? If we have a line that is sort of straight here next to, you know, by itself it's pretty wobbly, but once we put it next to something like this, suddenly that line becomes very straight, right? So think about contrast in, in everything. That's, that's the secret, right? To The secret to life <laughs> is contrast. So with gesture to play it up, uh, sometimes it's, it really is about playing up contrast of of movement here. So anyway, so we have, uh, you know, the rest of his body set up. We can uh, kind of jump into his arms here. So with the arms, what I'm really thinking about is the kind of top plane to this arm here. You really want to show the top of that shoulder, and I'll get into that as I progress to the drawing here. And we'll feel that volume travel in this direction the whole way. Now one area it will change is at the wrist. So just like with um, the ankle, the knee, uh, the wrist will tend to box out here. And there's sort of a pattern forming with that in that it's really the joints that tend to box out because the joints are where the, uh, the bone actually comes to the surface here. And this arm coming out here, so what is it doing? It's kind of turning away from us slightly. And then it's coming towards us. And we can actually box out this form now. So we'll feel that bump on his uh, wrist. That's going to be the ulna. And then we can feel this side plane here. It's going to be kind of twisting, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And his hand, something for his hand, uh, you know, at this point, don't be too critical, but do put something in there. Um, something is better than nothing in this case. Again, treat treat it as a whole. Uh, and for his head here, you know, this is pretty much a straight profile, uh, maybe a, leaning a hair towards uh, turning away from us, right? So essentially this jawline is going to sit right in the middle of his head here. If we're seeing more of a three-quarters view, that jawline will probably be closer to the back, right? So we see more of his, the front of his face. Or if he's turning away from us, that jawline will probably be closer to the front. And we'll just see a sliver of his face and more of, say, the back of his head. So a lot of times I'll just use that jawline to define the rotation here of the head. Uh, let's see, so taking my time here, this is turning down, let's get this, and I'm actually thinking a little bit about this perspective here and how everything meets the ground. All right, so from here, we've set it up. Uh, you know, we got our gesture, we start to build in these simple forms, and so really think about this as a, as a procedural thing where we do one thing to the whole figure, then we do the next step and the next step, and we build upon, uh, you know, what we've done. And that way you're not sort of dealing with everything at the same time, but you can sort of isolate uh, each individual problem. Uh, and uh, really, you know, if you're in like workshop or life drawing class and they have different time limits, say 
uh, like say two minutes and five minutes and ten minutes or whatever basically what I would do is use each specific time to to get to one stage of the process so you have two minutes uh, maybe you just get the gesture down you know you don't worry about structure or anything and then you have five minutes you get the gesture down and then on top of that we can build in our form basic form and then maybe 10 minutes you know you get the gesture down you get your basic forms and then you can start dealing with some more specific um, details and and whatever anatomy and and whatnot and then when you have you know like 20 minute pose you can just go do the whole shebang and and get it all in there uh, sort of like what I'm doing here uh, all right so again from here we can sort of jump into it a little bit and I'll just kind of talk about what I'm thinking about here uh, so we are seeing from his head here I'll just sort of establish his brow ridge and I'm not going to talk too much about the head uh, for this demo just because uh, you know the head sort of deserves its own its own thing here there's a lot to talk about right uh, so I'll just kind of block something in here not going to get too specific and we'll feel that hair wrap around so again thinking about this volume and how this is going to wrap here and he's got this kind of swoosh to the front of his hair here and we feel this pull back and down his neck here so this will all kind of turn as volume here Uh, now one thing I want to say is with, you know, as I come in here and I start to deal with more anatomy and stuff, really anatomy in the grand scheme of things is not so important, you know, in terms of learning to draw. Learning to draw is really about how do I draw this, right? How do I draw a cylinder and a box? Because anatomy is something that's very specific uh, to the human figure. It's important because, you know, if you're doing illustration or, or whatever, fine art, uh, you're most likely going to be dealing with the figure. Um, but uh, don't think of anatomy as an end in itself, but really just a tool you want to use to communicate something. Um, and you know, the more, the more anatomy or the more specific you can get, the more clearly you can communicate or the more subtly you can communicate. Uh, let's see. So coming through here, we feel this volume to his neck. We feel this stretch to the mastoid muscle here, and we can kind of define this underplane to his chin here. Uh, moving into his shoulders here. Now we really want to think of this as being sort of a top plane here like this. So in the front, what we get is a sense of his uh, clavicle, in this case, pushing up into his shoulder. And on the other side, we feel that sort of wrapping around now behind that we feel around so basically you want to kind of complete think of it like a table so we have to find the front edge here and then we have to find the back edge here to complete that plane uh, so in the back here we feel that neck stretch and we feel this form of his trapezius pull out to that clavicle we feel it stretch out and then back here we have this curve here and then we pull into this straight so this straight is essentially the form of his scapula here so one thing I'm, I'm looking for too are these kind of curvier lines of the flesh and then these straighter lines of the bone so bone will tend to be harder and straighter and flesh will be this wispier softer curve so I'm always looking for that contrast in the figure um, let's see, so we have a chromium process here. We really feel his deltoid sort of pushing up against that clavicle and pulling back down, looking for his armpit here. And now I'm trying to complete this shape here of his deltoid. And we feel it kind of pull out in the back. Uh, in this case, kind of bleeding into his tricep here. 
stepping down and we can't quite see the condyles we see we get a feeling for one on the inside here and the outer one is actually covered up by this muscle group here uh, let's see coming down here though so on his deltoid here one thing to think about is that it is a side muscle so as it pulls down where it ends here this is actually the middle of the outside of the arm here so if we draw this line through here that's indicating that we're seeing kind of a side plane and then we have a front plane here of his bicep here so his bicep is going to come in here and wedge in between condyl here and this other form which actually starts from the side here these would be your um, the supinator group and now as I come down here one thing I'm always looking for with this group is you know before you before you draw it down look at where his thumb is here so on this case in this case it's on the inside kind of tucking in behind his leg so what's going to happen is this is going to twist over this group always goes to the thumb here so we're getting a twisting of the form the box of his wrist here will push back through here and then we'll feel these forms travel underneath going to the underside of his palm here so there's this transition through and then on the outside what's kind of filling out some of this volume would be the extensors to his uh, his fingers here that corner here so you know essentially what you're using in this case the deltoid to do to help you define the rotation right and how it ends and also it helps you line up structurally these other forms that it links to all right so we have this here coming down uh, pushing into his pecs here we can feel this compression we feel this kind of bunching up underneath his arm as this pulls out this way here so we're going to feel this kind of tube coming through here so this is a compression here and then on the opposite side his other pec we're going to feel more of sort of a stretch as his arm reaches out and one thing too to look at is you know with this sort of tilt of his shoulders again we're going to get kind of a tilt in his pecs here where this one sits higher and this one drops down lower So I'm trying to be very specific about the relationship of things because that's really what in the end sells the gesture, right? Sells the movement of the pose, the action. Uh, coming in here, so we're going to have this stretch on this side. We can feel his lats pull down, pulling onto his, his rib cage here. And then we'll feel pulling off of that the form of his obliques attaching to the top of that box here on the opposite side we're going to feel his ribs pinch in here and transition into his abdominals and we feel a sliver of this oblique here so I'm going to kind of exaggerate this kind of bulging out and again attaching right onto the top of that box the top of the iliac crest here and i'm also kind of emphasizing this kind of turn in the plane here so we can really define where that side plane ends and where that front plane begins here and then pulling down we'll feel that uh, form of his hips here the glutes pulling in and bracketing this so thinking about get one side you find the other side the relating form will feel this kind of fanning out and stretching into his leg to some degree here and then let's see so we have here this kind of connection 
to his leg. So again, thinking about this volume, we really want to take this and turn it over. Turn this over here and we're going to feel that uh, lateralis here kind of pull out. Again, I'm kind of exaggerating this to emphasize that sense of weight um, pushing on this leg where he's really bearing down on it. And then we feel that sartorius. So we really want to use that sartorius to help define this volume some more here. So this comes through. And so it's doing two things. It's giving us, as it wraps around, that sense of perspective and volume. And because this leg is foreshortened, we feel it come through and in front of this back form here of the adductors. So it's giving us that overlap and we're using that overlap to communicate volume here. So ultimately, you know, it's not, it's not really about what you're putting in there, but why, why you're putting it in there, right? And then this comes out, we get this pinch of his, whatever that is, the calf coming through here. We feel that tendon on this side. This is going to relate through to his knee here. So the way the knee is bent in this case, we're not actually going to be seeing the tibial nose so much because it's turning away from us. But we do see that patella, almost sort of like the top plane of the patella. And this highlight we see in here, that's going to be the edge of the femur here. And then on this side, we feel that form of the, uh, the medialis muscle here pulling through. So we can actually use that in this case as our inside corner here. So you really want to just kind of use the anatomy as an excuse to draw a box, right? Or you disguise that box as a femur and a tibia together. Uh, so coming through here, we have this in front. Uh, let's actually, we can draw his, his hand in here. I'll just throw something. I'm not going to go too crazy with this here, but we feel his pinky here. Ring finger. So, you know what I find if, if you're doing sort of a quicker pose, um, you can deal more with sort of shapes uh, to get things down and then work out the form afterwards. So I feel that stool coming through here. Uh, here, this would sort of be the corner here to the bicep. And on this side, so this, this arm here is really just sort of draping over. We'll feel the pull of his uh, deltoid over here. And again, you know, where does the deltoid end? So it's going to be pulling in here and actually we're getting an overlap into the form. So where that ends there, that's kind of defining for us that we're seeing or telling us that we're seeing the side plane to this form here. And we can't quite see the condyle. There might be a sliver of one here, but this would be sort of the axis through there. And we're going to feel, so we have this edge here. Let's contain the form so we feel the other side to it. We feel this pulling over. And we're going to get in the front here, the form of the bicep. And in the back, we feel the tricep here. And then pulling along this edge here, that's going to be where the... Uh, brachioradialis and the supinator longus pull through. Uh, so again, you know, before we continue these, where are they going to go? So on the hand down here, the thumb is on the inside closer to the knee. So we're going to feel those twist over and pull towards that form. And then on the inside, we feel those, um, the pronator and the uh, whatever those are. And then on the outside here, we're getting a sliver. 
say, of the extensors on the top. And then we'll continue through to that kind of box of the wrist here. Let's kind of, I'm going to actually kind of shorten this up a little bit. So this bump we see is the, the ulna here, which would be traveling back in space. So in this case, the gesture here is really similar to, um, to this arm here. And so this form here, and this form here, and the, the bicep is actually sort of wedging in. So you have this pushing in between these two forms here. Uh, let's see. So moving to his hand, we can throw something in. Again, I'm not going to go too crazy with this, but just thinking of that block. And we can kind of define his fingers. So I really think of this in kind of three sections here as I'm building it. We have the kind of back of the hand here. We have the first uh, digits here and then we move down to where they bend over that stool. So, and you know, if we just gave this some depth and then added or divided up the fingers and you got a pretty good kind of basic hand here. And, you know, so I do make it a point to try and solve the hands here. You know, you want to uh, keep working at it to the point where it's not so scary anymore, right? <laughs> uh, so moving back across here with this leg, this pulls through, uh, you know, we might get a, see a sliver of his abdominals here pushing in or wedging in. And then it's the same thing. So as this attaches, you know, thinking about this uh, dimension here, this, uh, this cylinder here, this is going to turn over here. We feel the tension here in the leg here. Uh, pulling through, let's find the opposite sides of bracketing this. We'll get a sense sliver of the uh, glutes here. And then we feel those back muscles here to the leg. So this is going to be the rectus femoris here. And then there's another little form in here that's pulling through pretty taut. That's going to be the gracilis here. And this is going to join up with the sartorius was which, which cuts across here and again this is the sartorius is useful because it carries us around the form and it also kind of divides up the leg so we can pull out more overlaps to uh to define the perspective and the depth of things here so this pulls in this uh so this group here will pull in and they're actually anchored at the the inside edge of the tibia there. It's a bunch of things that just get together and and hang out at the bottom of the tibia. So finding the other side and again basically what I'm doing is I'm just working around this box that I set up for myself and relating these forms. So in this case you know because of the angle we're actually seeing the patella here sitting up high and that leg is not um, bent to an extreme degree. So we're going to be seeing that patella sit on top. And then on the inside here, we really feel the form of the um, vastus medialis here. And then just below that, we get that bump of the, um, this is the, the inside edge of the femur here. Again, that kind of whistle here. turning in. And this will pull down into, uh, on the inside here, this will gesture back into the uh, tibia. We feel that turning inwards. And this will run into that bump on the ankle, uh, the maliosis. So let's, you know, I probably have this a little bit short here. 
and maybe his foot actually a little bit big so we can adjust that here this will turn in now you know one thing about this drawing uh, it you know it's kind of messy um, and I'm really sort of over exaggerating things more so than I would normally kind of draw this but the point of this type of drawing you know think of it as more of an analytical figure drawing it's not so much to make a something you're gonna put on the fridge as it is like to to draw for understanding so as I work all these things out I'm really tr making a point to clarify areas um, figuring out how things fit together how things line up you know thinking about my anatomy thinking about my how to uh, communicate those things as form so it's really drawing for understanding more so than making a pretty picture so this ties in here we're going to feel on the outside tibialis and tychus here as this drops down into the ankle this is actually this form is actually twisting over into the inside here uh, but the connection here you know you can really think of these ankle bones if we see them from the front you know the inside one is higher the outside one is lower and we feel that foot kind of wedge in here. So if you look at like all the old master drawings and stuff, they always have this kind of wedge in of the, uh, the foot. And really you can think of these bones as sort of like a, a wrench here. So we have this coming down here. And this kind of plugs into on your, your foot there is a bone at the top called the talus here and the rest of your your foot here kind of hangs onto that so as this reaches down it clamps onto it and that's sort of the hinge of your foot there and so that's where that wedge kind of comes into play here so this comes through we can pull out we see the um, the division here from the tarsals to the metatarsals coming through and then we feel metatarsal the big toe here you know, again I'm not going to go too crazy into the foot just to get a sense of the general gesture here and the basic structure in the back we'll feel the heel here and as he lifts his foot up we're really going to feel that sort of tension in the calf area because as his calf flexes here it's going to pull on the Achilles tendon and that's what actually hinges your foot back in space here or back uh, back up from the heel um, underneath the uh, whatever this is here we're actually seeing a bit of the uh, soleus here on the uh, contour so this is actually sitting on top here and this form sits below it. And really, you know, there's not much going on, on the inside of the leg. This is sort of just bone here. Uh, let's see. So, so I have this all set up, you know, uh, we, I guess we can throw a little bit of tone here. Uh, let's see if this light is a little weird. Uh, so as I bring in some tone, um, you know, of course, you want to think about the light source here as coming in this way, and I'm really going to treat it simply here. So just two values. Don't worry about, it's not so much about rendering as it is about just communicating an idea, right, or a volume. Uh, so here we just, um, we're just going to feel his top plane to his cheek and then as it turns down this turns into shadow here so we can knock this back his neck is all in shadow we can feel sort of a cast shadow pushing over his shoulder here let's actually just run it up we can use carve out that shape to define his shoulder we come out we hit this corner here so I'm really thinking about how this runs along the form and we can sort of bring in a core shadow here. Now as I bring in this core shadow 
along his arm here, you want to sort of avoid just sort of going down in a haphazard line, but really think about the form that this is relating to. So this is, you know, this is basically the corner to his deltoid. So we think about this here, we think about this, and if we sort of close off this shape, that's where that is going to end here. And then we transition, we'll get an overlap here, and we'll find the corner now to his, uh, his bicep. And we can push out. We get another overlap here, and now we're hitting the corner of this form here. And as it pulls down here, then we hit the corner of the wrist. So this comes down here, and now we can pull this into a straight. So I'm trying to be very deliberate and specific about how I uh, address this form here, or these shadows here. So, and then we're getting this cast shadow over the edge, and his hand basically just all falls in shadow, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's see, so we have this here, and so on his pec here we're feeling this this bulge up here, so I actually kind of just did it already as I was drawing it, but we feel this kind of turn down of the form here. And then on the opposite side of his pecs we're just seeing a little bit of tone where his pec turns down. and. As we get his rib cage pinching in, one thing I'll say is, uh, just so to simplify this, I'm going to omit this pool of light we see in his side, and I'm just going to knock this whole thing in shadow, uh, just to get a clearer read. And basically, what what I want to show is that his upper torso is leaning over, and then we'll feel this essentially kind of fall back in shadow. So that will kind of enhance the, the depth uh, as we feel this forward and everything else will kind of push back in space here. And then, but we can bring in also this, um, this kind of cast shadow from his arm here. Uh, let's kind of pull this out a little further. So this will be darker. And then we transition into his, uh, whatever this is, biceps or rectus femoris on the top here, that's the high point. And then we shift into his, the medialis here. So as I do this, I'm trying to emphasize this because it's going to help bring out a corner here. And notice as I do this, I'm trying to carry this around. Uh, this is sort of around as well. Rather than just bringing it straight through, I try to turn it over the volume as much as possible here. And now for this knee, uh, you know, a lot of it is actually, uh, you have to make the decision here. Do you want it to be in shadow or is it not in shadow? And in this case, just for clarity and to simplify this a little bit, I am actually just going to knock this back in shadow. And, you know, one thing we can actually do is maybe turn this over a little bit. Again, coming back to this idea of the volume. So when you're dealing with anatomy, uh, the form will always trump anatomy. You know, you don't want to put in some anatomical detail just because it's there if it's going to hurt the read of the form, right? Uh, so this will come through. We get an overlap as we pull out the corner to his bicep here. This will turn down, and then we're going to get this wedge. So this form will now push in front here. And then we can shade this through over this group here. And we're going to get another overlap where we meet kind of the block of his wrist here. So again, this is very sort of um, 
pushed in terms of you know these these overlaps and stuff but it's you know it's good exercise to try and do that just so you you really know you know how these forms interlock with each other uh, now for for this like here as I pull in the shadow here one thing I'm really thinking about is how can I use this shadow to pull out depth um, so the obvious one would be to to simplify and you know just turn it around the form but we can also think about uh, the light and how how that shadow actually falls on the leg um, to kind of uh, hint at the idea of a corner here so if we think of uh, you know light demo here we think of a ball and you know everyone's seen this demo where we have the light hitting it and we have the shadow side and the light side and this is turning over and then we have this cast shadow falling on whatever surface it's hitting so what happens is the shadow uh, will be darker closer to the ball and as we move out that shadow will fade away right and also the edges of the shadow will be sharper closer to the ball and as we move out, we get this fall off where it gets softer here. So obviously, you know, in reality, this sort of depends on on the the light source, you know, and and how intense or far away it is. Uh, but we can basically use this concept to and and play with it to create a sense of depth here, or in this case, to to bring out a sense of form. So what I'll actually do is thinking of the high point of his leg here, this corner that's the area of the shadow that I'll make the darkest because that's the area I want to step forward and as we move away uh, it's still going to be relatively hard we we do go into this form shadow but I'll keep that point as kind of an accent to conceptually bring out this sense of a corner or a high point in the form so we read this we read this as a corner we read through those and then we get a feeling of that high point here or that corner uh, let's see so I do see this shadow here um, I'm actually going to omit that just because I don't want to break up the read too much here and on this side on this leg here basically if we just think of this as kind of a box and lights hitting it from this direction here it's just this side that's going to fall in shadow so the front of his patella here we can knock that back we see actually all this is kind of grouping together into one plane even this group in here as it turns around and then uh, basically at the edge of his calf in the front here we sort of see all this fall back in shadow here and his leg or his foot I guess is just falling down here uh, let's see so this is sort of the you know that's, that's about it I would say for the the demo you know if we want we can throw in again getting that sense of space with that tone this back oh one other thing too is you know to, to bring out more of a sense of depth and to pull this arm forward we can knock this shadow back a little bit more than we have for his torso back here and what that's gonna do is bring his arm to the forefront so we feel more of that depth and basically the overlap of, of this here in front of this So that's sort of the, the basic idea here. And what I might do is maybe we can do a another drawing that's not so diagrammatic as this. And you can sort of see how I I basically hit the same points, but I do it um, with a, a little more finesse or a little fancier, I guess, here. Um, so anyway, uh, hopefully that, that helped or you learned something. 
Uh, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, uh, leave a comment or, or you know, whatever. Uh, and I will see you next time.